Yo YouTube and my NoFap brothers, today's video is on the comparison of prolactin to dopamine and I found this chart online that I think explains it really really well and it also will explain to all of you why there is that first two weeks of withdrawal from PMO where it just seems like it's, it's you're in a, a low or you're feeling like you're worst and why it's so intense so um, it has some cool little bullet points in here so I'll read those and explain them to you the first one is at, at orgasm dopamine drops and prolactin shoots up and as you can see it's got orgasm listed right here and what happens after orgasm it's it's like being on a roller coaster really um, you know you shoot down and I'm not seeing a lot of up here, it's mostly down, but prolactin shoots up. And prolactin is an antagonist to dopamine. So what's happening is you have this dopamine surge, which is, which is lasting up to two weeks, and it's suppressing your dopamine. And we all know that dopamine uh, makes us feel good. You know, we, we get dopamine from many different things. Like when you achieve something, you, you feel really good and happy about that. Or say you go out to a really nice restaurant and you have a really good meal. That's going to give you some dopamine as well. Dopamine is like a, a reward chemical for a certain behavior or activity. But in the effects of uh, sex and, and orgasm, as you can see, dopamine drops after orgasm. So this is why I've always encouraged people to get on NoFap and to consider semen retention as part of your NoFap lifestyle as well, so that you're not having this nasty gap right here between prolactin and dopamine. And that's another reason why I'm usually so much more optimistic and upbeat simply because I don't have these problems. My prolactin is low and my dopamine is usually high. I get my dopamine from other sources. I don't have to have it diminished because of orgasm, so I'm much better off. Prolactin functions to shut down sexual desire. That definitely happens. What happens after orgasm slash ejaculation in men? Well, first thing that happens is you're going to lose your erection. You know, immediately you're going to lose probably about half of it, and the rest will slowly start to diminish. I mean, it's different for some men. Sometimes it's it's very quick. Others, they can maintain erection for a little while. You know, we're all slightly different, so that's okay. But the end result is we go into a refractory period. That's where we don't have an interest in sex. We may not have an interest in much else. We feel a little sleepy. We, we, you know, our interest is in sleeping. You know, we feel tired, uh, unmotivated, maybe cranky, maybe moody. I know that I get cranky and moody after ejaculating. So this is just one more reason why NoFap has improved my life, and so is semen retention. Simply by avoiding this phase where I, my dopamine crashes and prolactin shoots up and suppresses my dopamine for the next two weeks. Which is the next bullet point. Prolactin continues to be released in surges for up to two weeks after orgasm. That pretty much says it all. That That is why you have that, that, that lull. It doesn't mean you have zero dopamine potential. It doesn't mean that your testosterone is going to be held down and you're just going to be a slug for two weeks. But you're just not going to have that same edge, that same drive and enthusiasm and, and joy for life, realistically. I mean, for those of you who are in my server, for those of you who have heard me in my videos, when have you ever heard me talk pessimistically, talk depressed, talk about just, oh, I, I just can't do it. No, you, you're not going to hear that from me. And that's because I have an opposite scenario as most of you. My prolactin is down the bottom. My dopamine is up on the top. That, that, that is what the difference is. And the last bullet point, there is an inverse relationship between dopamine and prolactin. When one is high, the other is low. 
as I said earlier, they're antagonists to each other. It, it's a it's a constant battle, almost like a constant battle of good versus evil, you could say. And for men, prolactin would be the evil. Doesn't mean we shouldn't have like a zero level of prolactin, but as you can see, that there there is a a cause and effect here, and the ideal range during ar the arousal period of sex would be about where I'm circling right here. You, you're you're not going to be in danger of an orgasm, but you're still going to be getting pleasure. You're going to feel happy, connected with your partner, whatever. During non-aroused times, your, your dopamine is going to be down here. It, it could shoot up too. Like say if you have a really satisfying situation, you're going to feel really good about yourself. Well, hey, you're going to get a dopamine rush from that too. So I hope this video explains a little better of what I'm constantly trying to teach everyone about the negative effects of orgasm and ejaculation for men. Uh, I'm not saying you should never enjoy orgasm or ejaculation because yes, they do feel good. They do have a purpose and they do have a, a, a part in our lives. Particularly, you're going to get wet dreams uh, during no fap, um, during any kind of abstinence, you're, you're, you're going to ejaculate when you're trying to have a family, you know, procreation. Those are beautiful times to have that happen. So again, I, I hope this video helps you. I'm going to leave my email address in the comment sections below. If you need more information or want more clarity, because I didn't have a lot of time, I kind of threw this video together. You know, please feel free to reach out to me, email me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I have time because I really do want to help. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Have a great day, brothers, and I'll catch you in the next, next video.